With InDesign, all text and place graphics exist inside a frame. I'm going to start by creating a new document, and I'll make it 6 inches by 4 inches postcard size with quarter inch margins. I'll click OK, and we'll build a text frame first. To create text from scratch in InDesign, you switch to the Type tool and get the little horizontal line just above the bottom of the cursor, called the I-beam, directly where the pink and purple guides meet. Pink for your margins, purple for your columns. And we're going to type shades of blue. I'll do a Select All, Command A, or Control A, and I'm going to choose the font Bauhaus. Once I do that, I often prefer optical kerning for better letter spacing built into InDesign, and I'll make the text a little bit larger. Now, if you press the Escape key just once, that will get you off of the Type tool and back to your Selection tool. And you can see my text frame is larger than it needs to be. If your resolution is high enough, there's a button on the control panel the bar across the top of your screen that will automatically fit the frame to the content. If it's not large enough, you could simply drag the corners and pull that in so it doesn't occupy so much space. Before I place an image, I'll click away, and now I'll choose File Place. Or in my head, I always say Drop In Picture or drop in text because the shortcut is Command D or Control D to drop in. I'll grab a few images. I'm going to start with this image Roman Stroll 01. And you'll notice I did not build a frame before I chose place. When you select text, InDesign builds a text frame for you automatically. When you select an image, it builds a picture frame or the container. And there are several ways to place images. I could click once, and it brings in the photo at 100%. If I undo that, I can line this up under the word blue visually, and click and drag so that the photo is the size that I'd like it to be. I'm going to aim for around 30%. You'll notice the smart guides in the lower right corner tell me that X is 30% and Y is 30% of the original. Now this is an important note. When I let go, I see a scale percentage of 100 and 100. This is the percentage of the frame or the container for the image. If I move over the center, you'll see the content grabber. One click with the Content Grabber selects the image inside the frame, and there I can see the actual scale, 30%. In fact, if I want to enlarge the picture inside the box to basically zoom in on the boy's face, I would hold down my Shift key to keep it proportional and drag the corner, and as I stretch when I let go, the frame that always has blue points is cropping the image, so now I'm just seeing more of the child. If I click away and click back on the frame, here are my blue points. And with the blue points, I can crop further or extend the frame. But in this case, when I've extended it, there isn't more image area. So a really handy button that you'll have across the top of your control panel is the Fit Frame to Content. This will make the picture box, or container, the size of the photo. So with one click, I reveal the entire photo again. If your resolution is below 1280 by 720, you might have to choose these options under Object Fitting and Fit Frame to Content. The control panel, the bar across the top in InDesign, shows more items or more buttons the higher your screen resolution is. I ultimately want this cropped a little bit closer so I see more of the child's face. And if I wanted to set an exact size, like a width of one and a half, 
and a height of 2, I could type that in. And then if I move to the center of the photo and click once, I can drag the photo until it's positioned better inside the box. The orange points let me know how much of the original image I have left over. And here I can see the real scale. If I click away and click back on the frame, it always reports 100% because the frame just picks up the new dimensions every time I set it. It's not really calculating the original size. If I look at the frame itself, I can see a yellow box here that says click to edit corners. And with one click, I can grab the corners and drag in to round them. The little diamonds let me do the rounding. If I undo twice, a little power user trick is my shift key and grabbing a corner will let me round just one side. And then I'll click on the photo and move it over to my margins. When I let go, I'll click away to deselect because I'm ready to place a second image. And when I choose File Place, I'm going to let InDesign Smart Guides show me where to line this up. So I'll double click to select the second photo. And if you watch my cursor, at the very upper left corner is a tiny black arrow just above the paintbrush. If I see it turn white, that's in design letting me know that it's going to snap to the exact X and Y position or starting point of the first image. As I'm dragging, if I see these two green guides, that means the shades of blue text frame is the exact same height as the picture frame I'm creating. As I keep dragging, this pink guide lets me know I've crossed over the center of my postcard. And as I drag further, these green arrows let me know I've matched the exact height of the previous picture. So when I let go, these are scaled to size. I'll click away and hit Command D or Control D to drop in picture or drop in text again. I'll look for the white guide and I'll click and drag to match the exact same width and height of the previous photo. Now if I open this plain image that I've created, I have a photo placed on the page that I'd like to put inside this airplane. I want to click the Direct Selection tool and click on the image to see orange points. The other way to do that would be to click the Content Grabber, the target in the middle. One click grabs the image inside the container and I'm going to cut it. Then I'll select the plane and I'll choose Edit, Paste Into. Paste Into is a very powerful way to mask images to shapes. If I click the content grabber again, I can now hold down shift to keep it proportional and scale up the photo until it's filling the entire airplane. You'll notice here I have an empty frame remaining and an X in a frame often means that a picture goes here. That's commonly used in template layout. When I created this document, I had InDesign build the frame for me. There are two types of rectangle tools. One is a rectangle frame tool, and if I click that and click once anywhere on the image, I could set up an exact size, like one and a half by one, and hit OK, so I've predefined that I want the image to come into a box that exact size. Now if I choose the Rectangle tool, both of these can contain pictures and both can contain text. But if I click once and again choose one and a half by one, when I go to my Selection tool and click away, if I choose to preview this document, your preview and screen modes are located on the application bar across the top of your screen. The application bar always begins with ID for InDesign. When I choose Preview, technically this frame is clear. No fill, no stroke. Stroke is Adobe's technical term for border or outline. If I go back to Normal View, this frame 
the one created with the rectangle tool has a default one point black border and I could increase that border or stroke as Adobe calls it its technical term you can get a thicker border for your image if I deselect and hit command D or control D or choose file place I can actually select two pictures at once so I will select this baby old school and command click on this SF 49ers Roman and when I hit open I can click once to target this frame click once to target that frame and both images are fitting in that one and a half by one inch area now I can marquee select just touch both frames and choose fill frame proportionally to make the pictures fit to the one and a half by one size then I can center the content. If I click away and click back on a photo, this selects the frame, but if you look for the content grabber and you see orange points, I can now move the picture down to get more of the child into this shot. Finally, on any frame, I can click once and move a hair away from the corner. On the corner, this will stretch or resize the frame but a hair away from the corner will actually rotate and InDesign's Smart Guides will show me the exact rotation angle that I've got. I hope you've enjoyed this tour of frames in InDesign. Everything you place on a page, whether it be an illustration, a photograph, or text exists in a frame so that you can pick it up and move it anywhere you'd like.